Algebra 2, 1.4d, inverses of sums, and I've got two theorems for you. When we multiply a number by negative 1, we get the additive inverse of that number. So 3 times a negative 1 is going to give us a negative 3. It makes its opposite across 0 on a number line. When we have a 3 and we add a negative 3, we get a 0. And we have a negative 3 and we add a 3, we get a 0. See? They're just opposites. Almost as if the zero is a mirror, and it's reflecting its opposite. So here's a theorem. The multiplicative property of negative 1 says, for any real number a, negative 1 times a, is negative a. And negative a is the additive inverse of a. They're the opposites. And we can go the other way. If we have negative a and we multiply it by a negative 1, it's going to bring us a, a positive a. So negative a is the additive inverse of a positive a. See that? So by using the multiplicative property of negative 1, we can replace an inverse sign by negative 1. We can simplify negative times negative 5x. Well, we've got like a little invisible 1 here, don't we? Whenever you see a negative sign in front of the parentheses like that, imagine there's a little negative 1 here. Okay, so it'd be negative 1 times negative 5x. That's the property of negative 1. And using the associative property, we can put the two numbers together and put the variable out here. These are like, right? And negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5 times x. When we have negative 4x minus 3y plus 5, imagine that there's that little negative 1 there. Because negative 1 times a 4 is a negative 4 anyway, right? So if we put these in parentheses and separate the negative from the 4 here as a negative 1, that's using the property of negative 1, then we have a positive 4x minus 3y plus 5, and that negative 1 is on the outside, and we can distribute it to each term, can't we? We can distribute this negative 1 to the 4x, we can distribute it to the 3y and to the 5 as negative 1 times 4x minus, because there's a minus sign there, negative 1 times 3y plus, because there's a plus in front of the 5, a negative 1 times 5. That's going to give us negative 4x minus a negative 3y plus a negative 5. That's still using the property of negative 1. So by distributing this negative 1 to each term, we end up with a plus in front of the 3y, because negative 1 times negative 3y is a positive 3y, and negative 1 times a positive 5 is a negative 5, see? And this is the subtraction theorem that we did that in video 1.4a, and there's a link in this description if you want to watch that, okay? So here's a theorem for you, a second one. We had the first one, the multiplicative property of negative 1. Now we get the inverse of a sum property. For any real numbers a and b, a negative times a plus b is going to give us a negative a plus a negative b. It's saying the inverse of a sum, here's the inverse, negative 1, of a sum, a and b, is the sum of these inverses. What it means is the opposite number of the sum is the sum of the opposite numbers. When you see this, this is the inverse and this is the sum, a and b. See, because they're being added together. And if we have a negative a and a negative b and add them together, it's the same thing as this. See? Well, we can use the inverse of a sum property when we add more than two terms. It doesn't have to just be one. It could be two, three, four. It also works for subtraction differences because any difference is equivalent to a sum. So if we distribute this inverse, this negative, to the a and distribute it to the b, we're going to end up with negative a plus b. See? We're going to have negative 1 times a is a negative a, and negative 1 times negative b makes a positive b. See? And this property brings us to another rule. To find the additive inverse of an expression that has more than just one term, we just change the sign of every term. Less work. Just look at the sign and make it the opposite sign. So if we have a negative out here in front of this positive 2x, we make it a negative 2x. Instead of 
minus 4y, we get plus 4y. Instead of plus 36, we get minus 36. We just distribute that negative by changing the sign of each term. When we have a negative outside of the parentheses of this negative 5t plus 8z minus half w, we end up with a positive 5t minus 8z plus half w. Just changing the signs, that's all. So by doing the distributing of this negative, we're just changing the signs. So multiplying by negative 1 is like flipping the number to its mirror image across 0. Negative 1's inverse is a positive 1. Negative 2 is a positive 2. Negative 3 is a positive 3. Negative 3.14 is a positive 3.14. All right? And inverses can help us isolate a variable. That's going to be very helpful in the future. So when we add the additive inverse to a number, we make a zero pair. When we have a positive 2 and we add a negative 2, we make a zero. Positive 2 and negative 2 are a zero pair. All right? So... Our next video is 1.4e. There's a lot of lessons in this lesson four. And we're going to talk about the distributive property and simplifying. And if you want to go to any of the previous videos in chapter one that we've done so far, just look at this description. You can click right on the links. Okay? We talked all about division of real numbers and subtraction and multiplication and addition. We talked about, we even talked a little bit about base systems and binary. And if you want to see anything about expressions and the properties or any of the previous theorems, collecting like terms, it's all in the description. You can just click on them real quick, all right? Give yourself a nice little review. Keep up with what we're doing. Don't get lost, all right? Because each of my videos builds upon the previous one. I give a lesson, and then the next lesson incorporates the one before it, all right? We're climbing some stairs to finish Algebra 2, all right? I hope you're doing okay, and I'll see you next video. Bye.